Buying a property can be one of the best investments you will ever make. But if you make one of the top 5 real estate mistakes that we will discuss in this video, this can be your financial funeral, because you will have to pay for that for the rest of your life. And so this doesn't happen to you and you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Let's take a look at the top 5 real estate mistakes one by one before you make the most expensive mistake of your entire life. In last week's video, we learned that real estate is one of the major contributing factors why people here in Germany become millionaires. Because of the tax benefits and the leverage with the mortgage, you can easily get double digit returns, sometimes even north of 20% per year. If you have the right property, of course. And that's the first downside. Where do you even find good properties? With other investments like ETFs, it's easy, right? You just Google best ETFs of 2024 and then you can just buy them straight away with your mobile phone. Now that is a horrible investment strategy because it is built on the belief that past performance is a predictor for future results, which is not true. So please don't do this to yourself. Strategy is horrible. But execution is easy because there are unlimited shares of an ETF. But properties exist only once. If you buy a property, I can buy it as well. So where do you find properties? Good properties. The number one destination for real estate here in Germany is ImmoScout, right? I expressed my fair share of criticism about ImmoScout over the years and for good reason. It's great what they have built, don't get me wrong, but prices are so inflated up there, it's almost unbelievable. And to the surprise of many of you, we are actually very close to buying our very first property in ImmoScout ourselves. If we really buy the property, I'll show it to you, so definitely stay tuned. But for now, let me use this as an example for inflated prices. The asking price was 1.45 million euro when this property was published on ImmoScout. And now it went down to 1.08 million euro. A 26% drop in price, but still too expensive. Buying the property at this price will not be profitable. So either the seller meets us at our price or it's on to the next one. And same if you try to find a property on ImmoScout, negotiate the f out of it. And if the seller is not going down, it's on to the next one. That's one solution. And the other solution, if you don't want to do all of this on your own and want to profit from the fact that we've put in all the work already, you can find our properties on perfinex.de slash properties. There you can find the best properties from our network local banks, inheritance lawyers, property developers, directly from the source without a real estate agent in between, saving you a couple of thousand of euros. And in case you are overwhelmed with all the different options and don't know which property would be the best fit for you, you can book a free meeting with us on perfinex.de slash meeting. Now what about maintaining a property? That can be even more work than finding a property because this will stretch over a longer period of time. You have to find a tenant, draft a rental contract, hand over the keys, renovate your property, answer calls when your tenant destroyed something. Real estate can be a lot of work, which might still be manageable if you have a unit or two. But if you have multiple properties in multiple locations because you diversify, which we'll come to later on, this might be a lot of work. What's the solution here? Hiring a property management company that does all this work for you. A tenant moved out from one of my properties two months ago and what was absolutely flawless. The tenant notified the property manager, they published a flat online, screened potential new tenants and sent me the final three so I could choose which one I wanted. Then they drafted the rental contract and made sure the tenant got the keys and everything else. The property manager is always the first contact for the tenant, so I'm basically never involved in any of the day-to-day -day operations. I'm the owner of the property, an investor. I'm not looking for any more work. 
I have to make videos for you guys. And how much do you think these property management companies cost? I pay on average 25 to 35 euros a month. Well worth the money for all the work that they're doing for me. What do you think is the most popular investment of Germans? It's stocks, mutual funds and ETFs. Actually, they're in the second place if you summarize all the different interest rate accounts together. I told you in many videos already, we Germans like to let our money sleep on bank accounts. But why do you think stocks and ETFs are so popular? They had a tremendous return over the last years of course, but they are also super cheap and super easy to buy. Even if a stock costs 642,000 euros like Berkshire Hathaway, the most expensive stock in the world, you can buy fractions of it. Every major stock or ETF allows you to invest very little with monthly savings plans. With real estate, you have to buy a property in full. There's no fractional real estate anymore. If you are a regular viewer of our channel, you know what I'm talking about. Of course you can get a mortgage if you buy a property, but you still need to pay for the initial closing costs, which is right around 10% of the property value. And if the bank doesn't like the property or your financial situation, you might also have to make a down payment on top of that, meaning you have to invest tens of thousands of euros. And it doesn't stop here because you also have to maintain your property. So you have to pay your mortgage, insurance, repairs and all the other good stuff. What's the solution? You need to earn a lot of money. Easier said than done, I know. Now I've been a financial advisor over the last seven years, but that's the only way. Then you have enough to pay for all the closing and running costs and you will have the high tax rate to justify a real estate investment in the first place. Because if you earn more than 67k as a single or 134k as a married couple, you pay 42% income tax. And that means you can deduct all your real estate expenses from your taxes with a 42% benefit. And that ladies and gentlemen might allow you to buy your second property with zero euro thanks to a little trick called cash out refinancing that I explain in this video. With a lot of investments, you can get what most of you guys seem to desire so much, passive income. Even though we talked about this in a video before, that this is not really what you should be looking for because as soon as you make passive income, you are taxed. And if you can avoid paying taxes, legally of course, why not do it? Who in his right mind pays taxes if you don't have to? The thing though with passive income from real estate, it's never guaranteed, just like with dividends. A study looking at payout suspensions during the COVID-19 pandemic found that 219 companies cut approximately 56.5 billion in dividends in 2020 alone. Dividends are never guaranteed and so is rental income. You can lose your tenant and not find a new one in time, especially if you don't have a professional property manager who takes care of this. Interest rates can quadruple right when you have to refinance. Why do you think there are a lot of cheap properties hitting the market over the last three years? Because mortgage rates more than quadrupled right when people had to refinance. And now they don't have passive income anymore. They can't even pay their mortgages, so they are forced to sell. What's the solution here? You gotta have an emergency fund anyway for all the unplanned expenses that might come your way. Car breaks down, you need a new tooth if you're in the public health insurance, lots of things that can happen. And with real estate, you should have an even bigger emergency fund. So try to add three monthly rents for every property and you should be fine. Another reason why stocks and ETFs are so popular is that you can keep things flexible. And because ETFs and stocks are pretty liquid too, you can buy and sell them any day from Monday to Friday. You guys love them even more. And it's cool, don't get me wrong. But from a financial planning point of view, let me put my invisible financial planner glasses on, commit yourself at least a couple of years and you will benefit tremendously from that. Here are some classical sentences you guys say in meetings with us. I might leave Germany in a couple of years, 
or I might stay forever. Maybe I want to buy a house in two to three years, but maybe not. I want to invest for a year or two and then see how it's going. In this Tinder swipe left swipe right society, nobody wants to commit anymore. I get it. But this severely limits your possibilities to make your money work for you. I'm actually thinking about making a video, flexibility costs you a lot of money. Let me know if you would be interested in that. I think that would help some of you guys a lot. Only invest in real estate if you have at least 10 years that you are willing to invest. Which you should anyway. No matter which investment we're talking about, 10 years is always a good minimum investment period. Because after 10 years, you can sell your investment property completely tax free. And now give me one other investment, which gives you passive income, a double digit return because of the leverage with the mortgage and tax free profits. I don't know any other than real estate, but maybe you guys can come up with something. So far, we found solutions to all the problems listed here. And I think these problems arise mostly because real estate is not the right investment for you in the first place, or you approach real estate in a very unprofessional and reckless way. But the last disadvantage on the list. Critics might actually have a point here. Diversification is the true key to investment success. I've said it in many videos and I say it again. And diversification with real estate is pretty tough in the beginning. When you buy your first property, it will cost you hundreds of thousands of euros. Meaning that you will owe hundreds of thousands of euros to the bank. And if something happens to this property now, you are If you buy a stock for 1000 euros and it goes to zero, okay, not fun but you'll get over it. But if hundreds of thousands of euros blow up, this will take a long time until you recover financially and emotionally from this. So what's the solution? Don't go all in with your very first property. Plenty of you guys reach out with 50k or more in savings and most, if not all the time, we buy a property that is quite small for your budget. Why do we do this? So you can buy another property in 6 or 12 months from now. So you're diversified again. Now what if you don't have 50k in savings and you can't buy two properties in a very short amount of time? Then you better make sure that your first investment is an absolute banger and nothing happens to it. And if we can help you with this, then you can book a free meeting with us on perfectnext.de slash meeting. What did we learn in this video? After publishing a lot of videos over the years saying how good of an investment real estate can be, it feels very good to show the downsides for once, so you guys can make the decision if real estate is the right investment for you or not. For most downsides, there's a pretty easy solution. You just gotta be aware of these downsides and plan accordingly. And with the video series we are planning, where I showed you the blurred Immo Scout screenshot earlier on, you will see that you can make a really good investment out of almost every property if you do it right. So stay tuned for that one.